Hello and thank you for this great opportunity to talk about uh, Farms Career Ladder's advancement to leadership roles and beyond in compounding pharmacies. My name is Devin Wallace, founder and principal consultant of Wallace Ventures Medical Sales and Consulting. Extremely excited to speak with you all about this topic. I've been a pharmacy educator and I've written educational material, uh, including job descriptions for organizations over the last 10 years. Uh, and I hope this information today guides you uh, on your future endeavors. As presenter, I do not have anything to disclose. Objectives. Objective one, and identify some career opportunities for pharmacy technicians looking into leadership roles. Objective number two, describe methods of uh, advancing into leadership positions through educational offerings, certifications, and certificate programs for pharmacy technicians. And objective number three, discuss examples of career ladders from entry level to leadership uh, and or management for pharmacy technicians. So, there we go. Where to begin? Uh, you gotta find your passion, follow it. Uh, many pharmacy technicians in the field today will say, I want to advance my career. I don't know where to start. Uh, we'll cover some of these advanced roles uh, available to pharmacy technicians, including how to go about obtaining the education and or training for advancement, um, which will position them for opportunities to grow careers up into leadership roles and or management. Uh, the advancing roles and career paths. Um, first off, you got to start with your passion. You need to communicate with others. Education training is involved to get to where you want to be. Networking and the continuing education all lead to the success. There are dozens of opportunities for pharmacy technicians to further one's career, many which are uh, untraditional paths. But at the core, still require pharmacy background. The path to advancing one's career might be sparked during employee review or a personal choice uh, to further one's career. Finding where to start the journey may seem confusing and we'll cover uh, where to begin. The possible career paths in pharmacy, uh, where to gain the building blocks to working up to leadership or management positions in their chosen path. And once you have an idea of your passionate, your passion, um, how to speak with others uh, who have the same passion, uh, who may have your dream job. Uh, this could be coworkers, including leads, supervisors, managers, those uh, you may just look up to uh, in the field outside of your current job. These individuals often can help uh, you cut through the fog of where to start um, your journey. You want to make, uh, I'm sorry, you'll want to take this passion and information from others and begin your journey. Uh, you may need additional training, education, or simply to support, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you may need uh, the support um, from those within your organization to advance your career. The most common area of confusion uh, for those looking to advance their career. Uh, Most common area for confusion for those looking to advance their career and roles is where. Where do I get the training or education to get where I want to go? Where to get the specialized education for a particular career layer may seem straightforward, just a simple internet search, and you have all the answers, right? Unfortunately, no. Sometimes it's not that simple, and it's overwhelming information age. Questions like, do I need to get uh, do I need to go back to college? Can I just take a class? Um, what's better than this? Uh, what's better, a certificate or a certification? What non pharmacy focused classes integrate into what I want to do? Hopefully, we can clear the fog today. Once you have the training or education, how to start one, uh, how to start your career path moving up the career ladder. Oftentimes, networking inside and outside the workplace 
will help you fast track your career ladder. Uh, or it may even introduce you to a career ladder you weren't aware about. Finally, continuing education, you might say, wait, I got the training and knowledge to advance. Why am I going to go back and learn again? The world is ever changing. Uh, pharmacy is a small world. As you know, medicine advances daily. So brushing up on the newest information is critical to being in the know and the now. Many pharmacy certifications uh, now require semi-annual, annual, or biannual continuing education to recertify. Uh, because what you learned last month may no longer be the way. Things uh, are ever-changing. A great example can be found in today's compounding. New knowledge comes to light and dramatic shifts happen, which require regulation changes often. So below are some of the pharmacy technician advanced roles, titles. Um, there are nine positions um, that we broke down from one of the leading uh, pharmacy um, Some of the career opportunities pulled from a pharmacy focused job search engine. To make it simple, I broke it down into nine fields that lend themselves to a particular career ladder for pharmacy technicians. For those just starting their career or looking to advance, these descriptions might seem out of their league or obtainable, unobtainable positions. With the right training and education, it opens up many doors for leadership to supervisor, management, or director or even operations of a particular career ladder. Some of those uh, nine that we've broken down are in automation, billing and finance, medication access, which includes patient care, engagement coordinators, um, dealing with insurance contracts, licensing and audits. Um, and that sometimes will also lend itself into the billing and finance aspect, being a pharmacy analyst, billing uh, adjudication. And then purchasing and inventory management. Uh, often automation is also gonna be involved in that area uh, now. Um, and some of those jobs that you may see may be an automation data an analyst consultant uh, or product implementation specialist dealing with the machinery. And the purchasing and inventory management, you're gonna deal with supply chain specialists, uh, pharmacy purchasing specialists. Uh, their day-to-day uh, -day focus is dealing with the purchasing and inventory management um, and often will work uh, hand in hand with some of these other uh, areas that we're going to pay focus to. And some of these are kind of untraditional, um, but are very relevant, and you can find them um, quite often in the uh, career searches. Uh, the sky is the limit on this. So you have cells. Uh, this is kind of non traditional, a lot of folks don't know about it but you will have folks who have a background in pharmacy or the medical industry um, and will work as acute clinical specialist representatives, regional sales managers, um, IT informatics, pharmacy network coordinators, uh, technical support specialist leads, compliance regulatory. Um, there's a high demand for this area. We'll talk further about it. You'll have quality control coordinators, pharmacy regulatory coordinators, um, diversion, drug diversion specialists, pharmacy audits, uh, and then uh, operations. Uh, this has become um, a bigger opportunity for pharmacy technicians to break into um, using their leadership uh, in different roles. Uh, we'll talk further about what um, some of those job uh, descriptions are and what leads to um, getting into operations. Education creates opportunity and all folks around professional development. Um, we're going to focus on the what and how of advancing through a career ladder. Professional development is the base of your foundation. Once you know what you want to do, um, the how becomes the challenge, as I said earlier. 
Um, there are many nonprofit and for-profit organizations who have classes, certifications, uh, and certificate programs available to help um, build your base to the next step. Um, and you might ask yourself, should I get a certification uh, or will certificates suffice? Uh, sometimes a few certificates um, might be what you need to advance your career ladder. Um, oftentimes, there are multiple certificates that are available that build up um, like a certificate program would. And we're going to talk a little bit further about that. Um, best thing you can do is look at the requirements listed into a position uh, that you eagerly want. Um, while two job titles uh, may look the same at face value, educational or um, knowledge uh, may be very different required for that position. Uh, it may require certifications over experience or knowledge of a particular industry. Um, say if you're going into cell, you need to want to have some expertise and knowledge of, of cells. Uh, or in the veterinarian industry, um, it's highly important that you would have some type of information relationship background in the veterinarian field, uh, and you can easily find that. So professional development, um, and there's different pathways uh, to consider here. Um, as I said earlier, you have certificate and certification. And I want to clear this up because a lot of folks get um, kind of sucked in and don't understand what the difference is. And, and there is a major difference. Um, typically, uh, a certificate program, I'm sorry, a certificate uh, is typically a one and done course for newcomers demonstrating basic knowledge um, of a particular focus. Uh, most often, this document is awarded by a, uh, a for-profit organizational. Uh, most often this document is awarded by a for-profit educational program or institution uh, and may award a designation uh, which is added to the end of your name. Uh, and this is kind of the same thing with, with certification and that's where a lot of folks will get um, kind of confused. Um, but the certification or certification program, it typically requires some previous professional experience or knowledge is awarded after demonstrating mas uh, mastery or competency uh, measured against a set of industry standards. Um, and you will find this, um, say, with uh, Forest Technician uh, Certification Board. Um, if you want to become a uh, CSPT, and we'll look further into that, um, it is assessed against uh, industry standards, which are in USP. Uh, United States Pharmacopeia. So to get that certification, you must be able to meet the industry standards um, or is measured against those industry standards, uh, which requires you show um, uh, your, your knowledge and ability to uh, do that uh, job, uh, say, in a sterile environment without um, contaminating any of the products. So I broke down the pharmacy certificate programs and pharmacy certificates that are available, uh, as, as well as many other uh, certificates that are out there. Um, and some of them are non-traditional, um, but to make it very easy, um, want to kind of, kind of make it plain text for you. So PTCB, uh, the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board, they have uh, certificate programs uh, in medication history, hazardous drug management, control substances, diversion, prevention, immunization, billing and reimbursement. Uh, and these lead to some of those uh, positions that we had spoke about earlier, such as hazardous drug management uh, or controlled substance diversion, um, even billing and reimbursement. MPTA, the National Farms Technician Association, uh, mirrors a lot of what PTCB has. And oftentimes um, the courses that are available through PT, uh, NPTA um, are direct uh, courses um, developed from PTCB. Uh, NPTA has, has made the courses um, mirroring what PTCB has wanted and PTCB has uh, gave the blessing that um, it was sufficient for you to go and take the exam after taking uh, their course. 
uh, ASHP um, uh, Association of uh, System of Health Pharmacists um, has a pharmacy informatics certificate program. So if IT is something you're, you're interested in, um, this is a course you'd want to look at. Um, PharmCon is another uh, organization, uh, also under freece.com. Um, um, they have a veterinarian course, they have an immunization and a uh, pharmacy span specialist. So you can see it's a little bit different from all the others that are, are out there, but if you're looking to get into the veterinary field, then you would want to look at taking um, one of their courses. And when I say the veterinary field, I mean veterinary compounding, uh, or even uh, if you're working in a veterinary facility as a pharmacy technician, you would want to take a uh, veterinarian course that may not be offered by uh, that particular uh, company you're working for, but there are outside organizations that offer specialty courses like this. Uh, and then of course, critical point, they have a sterile compounding course uh, that you can go um, to their program, um, to their facility. Uh, and I know that they're doing some online as well um, to gain that information and, and that knowledge base uh, for sterile compounding if you wanted to move up in your career path from entry level. And then you have the pharmacist certifications. Um, and these are the coveted what uh, folks want to go after um, this is often what you're going to see uh, the initials behind someone's name, uh, PTCB. Um, they have a certification um, certificate, sorry, certification for um, sterile uh, compounding, which is uh, CSPT, Compound Sterile Preparation Technician. Um, and we'll we'll look into the uh, numbers on this a little bit. Um, we were able to pull some of the numbers from PTCB. They shared some. Um, it just shows you um, how quickly these courses are advancing and how many people are signing up. Uh, you have You have ACs. Yeah, you want to start that over again? Sure. Because you know you went on mute, right? Obviously. <laughs> Just noticed it. You have pharmacy certifications. Uh, these are the coveted certifications that a lot of folks are going to want to um, go after and are attracted to. Uh, and these are usually the courses you're going to take where you're going to be able to put the initials after your name. So you have PTCB, uh, the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board. They have a uh, sterile compounding preparation technician course, the CSPT. Um, once again, this uh, is in line with USP, shows that you have the knowledge base um, and you are meeting the industry standards and understand USP and are meeting those guidelines. Um, you have the Accreditation Commission for uh, Healthcare, ACHC, um, also um, part of PCAD, the Pharmacy Compounding uh, Accreditation Board. Uh, they have a hazardous drug designated person, um, which is HDDP. Uh, also have a HCHC certified consultant. So as a uh, pharmacy technician um, who's worked in the field for a long period of time, and you want to become a consultant to help facilities out, you could take a course through ACHC and help uh, facilities who are becoming due for uh, accreditation or trying to get accreditation through ACHC or PCAB to get that certification by um, taking the ACHC certified consultant course. MPTA um, has their medication history, hazardous drug management, uh, immunization and billing reimbursement course. Uh, this is a certificate. You can build it up uh, as part of a certificate program that PTCB uh, also has, which is known as the Advanced um, Certified Pharmacy Technician. Then you have the critical point um, qualified person uh, for 503A, 503B industry. If you don't know what the difference is, if you're a mom and pop pharmacy, you work at a Walgreens or um, a Walmart, you're considered a 503A. A lot of hospitals are also considered 503A pharmacies. 503B pharmacies are manufacturing facilities. They, they um, manufacture bulk medications 
oftentimes um, uh, are not assigned to a particular patient. They are compounding bulk medications that can be sold um, to uh, hospitals or um, other pharmacies. And ASHP, uh, they also have a CSPT, Compound Sterile Preparation um, Technician course um, that is in line with PTCB. So um, you could uh, take the classes with ASHP and then take the test, um, which is a PTCB um, exam. And the, um, just to go a little bit in more detail. So with PharmCon uh, PRS, the Pharmacy Regulatory Specialist, this is a robust course that deals with pharmacy regulation, just like Critical Point has for the qualified person. Um, and just like hazardous drug uh, designated person, but different. So if an individual wants to get into regulatory compliance pharmacy, uh, but they don't want to be necessarily hands-on, you could take a PRS program through farmcom, freece.com, um, and obtain your PRS. Um, the state boards uh, have leaned on certifications like uh, ACHCs, um, HDDP, or critical points, qualified person, um, as, the, as an example, as a standard of um, the person who is overseeing compounding or regulatory uh, operations of facility. And that's not every state, but um, many states are starting to move in that direction. So if you want to be in charge of operations, you may want to look at those type of uh, cert certification programs that are available. And then some of the non-pharmacy focused certifications. Um, I myself uh, took some of these courses that are on here. Um, and the only reason why I knew about them is looking at jobs that were uh, becoming available or positions that were available um, that started to look for more um, education, more training uh, that was outside of traditional roles. Uh, as an entry-level pharmacy technician, all you need to have is your pharmacy certificate and you're pretty much ready to roll. As you start moving up that career ladder, uh, you're going to start taking more educational courses, uh, taking more continuing education. So um, some of those positions you're going to see out there that are for management may ask you to have a uh, certified associate uh, in project management, which is a CAPM, uh, or a project management professional. I see this very often uh, that organizations, as they're looking for pharmacy technicians who can move to the next level, uh, to have a PMP. Uh, and you can find those courses just by typing in PMP on Google and find there's, there's different organizations that offer it. Inventory management, um, oftentimes you're gonna see that they're looking for someone who's a uh, certified supply, supply chain professional, CSCP. In addition, they may ask that a person is a uh, certified in production and inventory management. Uh, I haven't seen this as much, but um, it has popped up a few times. Uh, quality and processes. I will tell you that I've seen this uh, every single time. Uh, it's almost um, kind of the, the standard now where they're asking that uh, you have a background. Uh, if you're into quality and processing uh, processes, you have either a Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma, or quality validation uh, certificate certification. An analyst, um, if you want to get into the IT aspect, you, you don't necessarily want to be on the floor you like dealing with numbers and, and billing and, and um, even you know improvement just by looking at the numbers. Um, you you could take a position in, as an analyst uh, and, and get a certified business analyst uh, professional certification. Um, another one haven't seen a whole lot of, but has come up more is uh, the IBA uh, Agile Analyst Certification. And then moving into uh, to IT, if you just strictly wanted to work with machinery automation. Um, you know, the background uh, of uh, kind of the, the unseen part of a pharmacy. Uh, you could get a A-plus certification, which is for hardware, a little bit of software. Um, you could get a certification in, with Cisco, Citrix. You may have seen where folks will come into a facility uh, to help 
put in uh, machinery or uh, new programs um, and how to maintain those, they need someone who is a uh, Cisco or Citrix certified professional. You become a uh, UX certified user experience. Uh, CAD, believe it or not, CAD is, is becoming a new thing. Um, we're moving into a new age where there's now going to be uh, a lot more 3D printing or a lot more manufacturing on site because we can't get products all the time. Um, so facilities are starting to manufacture their own products. Uh, and then sales, customer service, marketing. Um, there are certification certificate programs out there for Salesforce, uh, HubSpot. Um, you could become a certified professional salesperson. Sounds crazy. It's a real job. Uh, but um, getting these certifications uh, is going to help you move to the next level if that's what you want to do. Uh, certified sales executive, um, another uh, position that, that a lot of folks don't know about, but if you look at the job boards, they're out there. Um, there are a lot of sales jobs out there. There are a lot of analyst jobs out there, project management, quality and processes. Um, they're not reserved for just pharmacists anymore um, or folks with a, a bachelor's or doctorate. Um, other learning opportunities, you strictly don't have to go uh, to um, some of these organizations, profits, nonprofits. Um, there are other places where you can um, get these learning opportunities uh, outside of those traditional uh, places, um, including community colleges, workforce development. I know I was part of uh, workforce development. We were trying to build educational programs for technicians who wanted to move to the next level who didn't necessarily want to go back to uh, college. Uh, and you can offer that in either management, uh, you could offer it in uh, sterile compounding, um, environmental control. There's a lot of, of colleges that offer um, these programs out there. Uh, and often they're, they're, uh, the courses are, are non-college credit or non-CE, um, but it's great to have that, that piece of paperwork that says, I took this course, I, I, I passed it, um, and you should be building a portfolio of um, the certificates and certification programs that you've taken. They are important to actually list on your resume. Uh, internally, um, many organizations have sponsored training classes uh, or courses. Um, oftentimes, hospital systems uh, that do a lot of compounding will have something internally, either Six Six Sigma, um, Lean Six Sigma, um, or even compounding courses. We, we've seen that where organizations are partnering with uh, educational facilities who, who have um, compounding courses that have been designed. Um, and then one that I, then one that I believe in uh, very strongly is mentorship. Uh, management or, or supervisors um, have the great ability to uh, mentor others, um, lower than them to help them uh, move their careers forward. Uh, and there are opportunities that will um, arise for management positions or leadership positions. And it's great for an organization to start internally. You can build um, exactly what you want, spell exactly what you want through mentorship uh, of um, farmers technicians just coming on. Um, and it doesn't stop at uh, entry level. Uh, you have leads that become supervisors, supervisors become managers, managers that become directors, directors that become uh, CEOs and whatnot. Uh, and then you have professional organizations. There's an asterisk next to a few of these and I, I want to spell off these means. This means that they are either pharmacy focused or um, that is uh, what will um, be heavily what they lean on um, in their education. Uh, so you have the Center of Farm School Cleaning Innovation um, where you could get a CPCI uh, certification. You have Regulatory Affairs Professional Society, RAPS. This is becoming a very big organization. Uh, a lot of folks who are paying attention to it. It's a lot of regulations coming down in the healthcare field, uh, especially in the pharmacy field. As you know, compounding is gonna be changing over the next 12 months, 24 months. Uh, Conferences. A lot of people may not know this, but 
being able to go to a conference, uh, often you can take educational courses there, uh, or you can take a certificate uh, or a, a, a course on a particular um, thing that may be of interest to you. I started out my career learning about veterinarian um, by taking um, classes that were at uh, veterinarian conferences. Um, it was a bit of a shocker to hear, you know, have folks here that I was um, from the human compounding side of business, but to learn about what they were doing in their industry and connect the dots about, you know, um, what we can do in the pharmacy field um, to fill those gaps uh, is a great opportunity. Go to some of these conferences. It doesn't have to be just uh, in the pharmaceutical field. I'm taking courses on 3D printing, um, uh, hemp and marijuana industry. Uh, great opportunity for you. Um, and they don't have to be pharmacy focused. Some of the online offerings uh, and courses you can take that are non-pharmacy focused, that are non-traditional you may not think of, Udemy, um, online education. Harvard actually has courses and so does MIT that you can take. Uh, if you want to take business courses, if you want to take uh, courses in Lean Six Sigma, um, it's a great opportunity. They have free courses, Harvard, MIT online. Um, edX is another opportunity, uh, Coursera, and then Lyceum. Um, recently learned uh, about Lyceum uh, is a pharmacy program that is uh, online if you want to learn about compounding. Uh, really in-depth, if you don't have the understanding of, of compounding, sterile compounding, go to Lyceum. They have um, uh, video content on there that you can uh, look at, and it will help you either you know, towards your CSPT or even beyond that. So trying to touch back at uh, PTCB certification certificates, um, I reached out to them, and they sent me some information about uh, the different professional certi uh, certifications and certificates. Um, I wanted to see the growth in this area. Um, there are advancing roles for pharmacy technicians, but how fast are they growing? I can tell you just from looking at JobRx, um, when I went and looked, there were a vast amount of pharmacy technician uh, jobs on there, but weren't necessarily labeled as pharmacy technician. Um, and those are the advanced positions. Uh, and to get into those advanced roles uh, and positions, sometimes they ask you to have particular certifications and certificates. Some of those uh, being um, PTCB's advanced certification uh, certificate pharmacy uh, technician. Uh, this certificate program involves um, taking multiple certificate courses, such as billing and reimbursement certificates, uh, control substance diversion, prevention, hazardous drug management, immunization administration, medication history, uh, product verification is a new one that's very interesting and we're going to see a lot of um, organizations util utilize uh, is being able to take a pharmacy technician as a, a second check a uh, double pair of eyes to look at a product um, before it's being sent out. Of course, a pharmacist is always going to have the final say on it, but if it is going through an automated machine, um, it may uh, have the ability where it just needs two pharmacy technicians' eyes on it before it goes out the door. Uh, I am aware that there is a pharmacy in Arizona, uh, Express Scripts. They have a um, automated um, dispensing cabinet, a machine that has a pharmacist license. Uh, so it just takes two pharmacy technicians to sign off on, um, and then a quick uh, pharmacist verification variant, quick visual. Um, uh, the CSPT, um, as you can see, this program has been growing um, a lot. There is, uh, as of June 16th of this year, 1,122 um, technicians have passed that exam. It is not necessarily uh, something that every facility organization is going to require, but seeing these numbers, it goes to show that this is what is becoming um, the standard, the norm, what organizations are going to want to see. They're going to want to see if you're moving into compounding, sterile compounding, that you have uh, you've taken a, a certification course, that you're maintaining this certification course through your continuing education, um, including um, hazardous drug management. That's going to be the new one. That's that's, that's going to be um, taking a lot of 
focus uh, moving into the, the, um, the next year and even moving forward with USP 800. The employee incentive, uh, employer incentive. What is the incentive for an employer? Um, should you want to address advancing a pharmacy technician uh, role and responsibilities, um, developing uh, leadership opportunities and utilizing professional uh, development through yearly reviews and, and company initiatives? Absolutely. Uh, this is an opportunity for a uh, employer to raise the bar and say, you know, we, we want our pharmacy technicians to take on more of a leadership role, to take on more responsibilities. Um, and if an organization doesn't necessarily have um, a plan of action, um, best place to start is with those employer reviews. Uh, start building the backbone of, you know, we need to fill gaps in our, in our pharmacy for particular jobs and roles. Uh, we have entry-level pharmacy technicians spit out that, you know, there's opportunity to move up in an organization, um, but also spit up, spit out the information about how uh, a pharmacy technician could um, move up in those roles. So some of those incentives um, for advancement uh, for pharmacy uh, responsibilities and roles. Um, when you give pharmacy technicians the opportunity to advance their career, uh, to advance their career ladders, um, and, you know, they may just come in as entry level and then they want to move into compounding or they may want to move into IT. Um, when you start moving um, people in those directions of, of where they want to be and, and giving them the knowledge of, of what they need to do to get there, uh, you start increasing the loyalty and you have less turnover. Um, there's increased uh, productivity and motivation. You come employee comes to work every single day and, and they're doing something they love, they're going to be motivated every day. Um, you're going to save company knowledge. When uh, you retain your, your pharmacy technicians or your staff, um, they're not taking your company knowledge about what you do great to another organization and helping them do great. Uh, increase efficiencies and reduce wastage. Um, once again, it kind of goes back to that, that higher loyalty, um, increased productivity, productivity and, and motivation. If you love your job every day, you're going to take ownership of your job um, because it's important to you because you're, you're going to be there every single day. You love your job. And that's going to reduce the amount of, of mistakes that are made uh, because you're, you're putting more focus into your, your job. Uh, enhanced company image. I will tell you that organizations all over the world, um, when they invest in their employees, they have a great image. Uh, overall. And that's something that I think every organization, of course, wants. You, you want to look great uh, to, to the outside. You want to be able to attract the best um, employees when you're looking for new employees. And then increase uh, innovation. Um, once again, you, you are motivating your pharmacy technicians for advanced roles. They're taking courses. They're taking certificate programs. Um, they're maybe finishing a, a degree in, in college, um, it's going to create and spur innovation. They're going to be able to take new knowledge that they have and implement it into your company uh, or spur new ideas about how to do a process better um, or um, problems that are happening in the regulatory field and, and how they think that they can help fix that or um, different uh, uh, places that, that they could help um, with sales. Um, it's a great opportunity. And then a reduction in supervision. When you have folks who are trained uh, and you're pushing them, you're motivating them to uh, learn more uh, and be more involved in the company, um, there's a reduction in supervision. You're not going to constantly say, well, they, you know, they can only do this, they can only do that. I got to go check on them. Um, you can have folks who are learning more and become uh, multi- can work in multi roles, uh, which will require uh, less supervision in most cases. And then the tiers of pharmacy, um, the pharmacy leadership. Um, I wanted to break down the different tiers because I know it can be very confusing. Um, and I did talk a little bit about it, but let's go over it again. Um, you have entry level pharmacy technicians, uh, coordinator lead. 
who will then move into a supervisor, who will move into a manager and director. Um, and just to give you a little bit of insight, you know, I know that it becomes a uh, issue of what is the difference between a supervisor and manager? So there is a, a big difference. Uh, so starting with the entry level. Entry level uh, farmers technician, uh, typically be a certified uh, technician. Um, we'll have a basic understanding of the pharmacy and daily operations. And as you move up into a leadership or coordinator role, just to give you an idea of, of what you want to have, if you, uh, those skills, if you want to move up, is that you want to be able to demonstrate a desire to make a positive impact. Um, and you may go on and get some certificate certifications um, and hold specialty certificate or professional certifications. So when you start uh, looking at the folks above you, most often they're gonna have those certificates and those certifications. Um, moving further, uh, and a supervisor. A supervisor is gonna demonstrate ability to manage internal teams and implement projects. That's where that project management kind of comes into play. Uh, and they're gonna hold even more advanced specialty certificates and uh, professional certifications. Um, you're, you're dealing with a lot more people, you're dealing with projects, you're dealing with um, regulatory, uh, you're going to need a lot more certifications, a lot more education training. And then uh, manager director. Um, a manager director is going to have the demonstrated ability to build and manage complex projects uh, and or multiple teams. Uh, they're going to manage uh, company directives and uh, external influences. Um, so that's where, again, where you're going to be dealing with uh, external uh, influences such as regulatory or changes to um, state laws um, or even uh, a, a company directive that's been changed. And at the bottom, I uh, put um, kind of want to make sure that everyone has an understanding that um, mentorship it starts from the top and moves its way down. Uh, and I know that many not many organizations and, and, and people may not see this, but that's how mentorship works. It's usually not from the bottom up. You don't have entry level people mentoring managers and, and supervisors. It's just not the way it works. Um, so as you start moving up that ladder, you should be mentoring the people below. Um, and then continuous education. Your continuing education is going to steadily increase as you start moving up your career ladder. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter your path. Um, you, you're just going to have to continue to learn. Uh, it's kind of the name of the game. You learn more, you, you start moving up that ladder. Uh, so continuing education is continu continuously going to go up. Let's talk about some of the examples of the uh, job requirements. Um, you know, what do I need to, to get where I'm going? We've talked about some of the education opportunities. Now, how do those apply to the jobs that you may want to go after? So some of these job examples uh, that I've listed, um, the requirements, uh, e either the educational requirements or the uh, certifications and the certificates that were needed were pulled directly from real jobs that are out there. And it's not like I just took one, I took a lot of jobs that are out there. And, and compare them. Um, so quality assurance lead. Uh, oftentimes what we're gonna see, um, and I'm gonna say 100% of the time, but 90, 95% of the time, is it uh, you have a PMP, um, project management, um, you're a project management uh, person. Uh, you're also gonna have a background education in business analysts. Uh, you can go and take some of those courses that are available out there. You can even find them at the community colleges. Uh, you can go to conferences. Um, they don't have to be pharmacy focused. Just you, you need to learn how businesses work and operate. Um, a regulatory certificate. Um, there's multiple are out there. So depending on what you're dealing with, you're going to want to have a regulatory certificate, either a PRS or um, drug diversion. Um, or even uh, a quality um, insurance certificate uh, through some of the non-traditional uh, programs that are available out there. 
um, lead veterinary and pharmacy tech. Um, I know this is outside the realm for a lot of people, but it's a real job. It, it exists. The, the veterinary world uh, needs pharmacy technicians and pharmacists. Um, so if you love animals, here's your opportunity. Um, many cases um, for a, a lead position management position as a pharmacy tech in, in the veterinary field, um, they're requiring that you have a veterinary certificate um, or you have uh, previous knowledge. So sometimes you will have folks who will move over from the veterinary field into the pharmacy, the human field, um, who are prior uh, veterinary techs. This is a, a great opportunity for them to fill both roles. A drug diversion certificate. Um, unfortunately, uh, drug diversion is a problem in, the, in the, the animal industry just as much as it is the human industry. Uh, so they're going to ask you to, to more likely have a drug diversion certificate um, and understand how medications are, are be, being diverted. Um, and a CSPT, starting to see this more and more common, that uh, veterinary facilities are asking their technicians to be CSPT because they are 503A. They are considered 503As, and some facilities are considered 503B, which means that the state boards, the DEA, FDA, all have access to these facilities. So they want their um, technicians to have um, a good background understanding of, of how uh, the regulatory uh, field works and, and, and compounding. Another one would be inventory management. Um, this one was a little more difficult. There are a lot of different positions that are out there for inventory management, uh, inventory uh, supervisor, uh, director. Um, the most common, I would say 50% plus of the time, they were asking that you had a background uh, in Six Sigma or um, supply chain uh, certified. Um, and, and just to touch on, on what Six Sigma and Lean Six Sigma is, is uh, it's about process improvement. Um, instead of moving a product four times until uh, before it gets to a customer or, or to its, its last, as, uh, last place, it's how to streamline that process. Um, so that it's touching less hands, um, so that's moving through a facility faster. Um, so that's, a, I would say a lot of organizations starting to look for people with Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma backgrounds. It's an easy course to take. Um, when it comes to operations, pharmacy operations managers, um, this is kind of all over the board, but I will tell you that most of the facilities are looking for someone with a Six Sigma background, a project management person background, business analyst certification, um, and some type of um, regulatory uh, background, so like a PRS or a designated person. Um, and oftentimes you're gonna find that the phar pharmacy operations manager is a designated person of the facility uh, when it comes to their compounding operations. I wanna thank you guys for this opportunity to talk about some of the different career paths that are out there um, that lead to advanced roles in pharmacy tech for pharmacy technicians. Um, and hopefully gives you some takeaway about where to go out and get some of this education. Um, to help you advance to the next part of your career. Uh, even if you're switching career ladders, you, you decide, you know what? I don't want to work with humans anymore. They're just, they complain a lot. I want to go work with animals. Uh, animals don't complain as much. Where to go and get that education, that information, um, that you can move towards that, that career ladder and, and move your way up. Um, it's going to be pretty similar to, to the human side, but it may involve you take some extra courses. Devin, thanks. That's a, a really great presentation. So, so much information. Um, really comprehensive. I'm actually going to start a, a question with, a, I was going to have it last, but now I'm going to start out first. I was curious because, you know, you, you were talking about the veterinarian and uh, the veterinary stuff. So if you're interested in doing the veterinary, veterinary stuff, it's got to be a better word than stuff, right? <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it, it, it can be, you can consider it stuff. I mean, okay. there's a lot of different roles, uh, right. lend themselves a human as well. <laughs> I got it. If you're interested in going into the veterinary side of things, mm -hmm. um, it, are there roles you, one of the things you said, and I didn't have, I don't have the slide in front of me, but you were talking about moving in, into that and not dealing with humans or 
anyway, I was wondering, are there actual roles in veterinary offices or is it all in specifically in the compounding pharmacy? Like I was just wondering if some of the veterinary practices will bring in somebody who can manage, do they need somebody who's familiar with the pharmacy and stuff who can manage that side of things for them? Absolutely. Uh, yes, there are, there are positions for pharmacy technicians uh, in veterinarian facilities, uh, veterinarian hospitals. Um, I took on a role in a position as a consultant for one of the largest veterinarian um, facilities in the nation uh, and oversee compliance of over 1,200 facilities. Um, I'm not hands-on day-to-day compound operations, but um, having the expertise and that knowledge of, of uh, what the state boards are going to be looking for, because the, the veterinarian business has, um, has become under the oversight now, uh, as of recently, uh, of state boards of pharmacy, of the FDA, uh, before the FDA kind of kept their hands off, they didn't want to touch it. But now um, veterinary facilities need compound pharmacy technicians because they have to adhere to USP 795, USP 797, and USP 800. Uh, so it is no longer that you would work for a um, compounding facility that makes medications for a veterinarian facility and then sells it to them or sends it to them. They actually have to have people on site who can compound. Um, and a good example is um, living in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we dealt with um, equine uh, and not just equine uh, horses, but also with, they would deal with animals from the zoo, penguins and rhinoceroses and, and, uh, and whales. Um, the people who are compounding these medications have to understand how these drugs work for, particularly for certain animals, uh, because a cat is different from a dog. A dog is actually different from, an equine, from, a, from a horse. A horse is different from a whale different sizes, but also different me mechanisms, of how these medications work. Um, so if you really wanted to push uh, your knowledge base, you could go into the veterinarian industry um, because human is kind of the same every single day. You, uh, but in the veterinary field, you're all over the place uh, because you're dealing with uh, different patient sizes, but also um, different anatomies. Uh, there's a lot more different an types of animals out there than there are types of humans. So it seems to me when I talk to technicians, because I meet a lot, you know, whenever I'm doing stuff, I, I run into retail technicians. But I'm always like, well, if you, you know, if you ever get bored and you want something that's a little more like, you know, uh, if you've got any minor ADD or whatever, like that, that's how I think. I, was like, I always say you should go into compounding because there's a ton of yeah. different things going on, a ton of stuff to manage, and it's a lot more interesting um, and a lot more to manage. But what you're saying, if you're even more ADD, then get out of human and go into veterinary. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, kind of what we talked about that first step is yeah. you go from entry level to something more challenging. Um, you're, you're usually going to go into compounding. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get to compounding, uh, you know, it really opens up your eyes about um, what's involved and in, in what happens in pharmacy. Uh, and then there's always opportunities for, for leads uh, and supervisor positions for pharmacy technicians who are certified in compounding. They are all over the board um, uh, looking at the different uh, job websites. Okay. Uh, it, it's endless. Excellent. I was intrigued also when you said we started talking about the community college stuff, and even if you're not getting credit or CEs, that it's worthwhile. So Absolutely. is it something like auditing a class? Uh, I mean, meaning you get some sort of pay, because you mentioned get the paperwork. So are yeah. there specific classes? Is it classes that you could audit? Or what is that paperwork that it, that it is that you're referring to? Yeah, so... Uh... Specifically, Harvard and MIT, if you audit their course, you can take the class for free. Great opportunity. Uh, I know I took a few different courses. Um, one that was very exciting that, that my kids were very interested in was um, IT, C++, um, and Cisco, and then 3D printing. That was becoming a, a new field, and it will be a very big field that a lot of folks don't know about yet. Um, they're already doing a lot of these trials in Europe. And once it has proven as a success, you're gonna start seeing 3D printed drugs in the United States. And you're gonna to have to have 3D printed pharmacies. And you're gonna you're gonna to have to have um, folks with a background uh, in compounding, but also in IT, but also in 3D printing. 
And there's not very many people out there who can say that they have a background in 3D printing. There are a lot of courses available out there. Um, so wait, so they're 3D, 3D printing drugs? Correct. So you could take two drugs, one drug, 10 drugs, 15 drugs, and put it in one pill. Oh, okay. And that is the future of pharmacy. Yeah, uh, that goes back, ties all back into the back into the precision medicine stuff, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And because I mean, I've done, I knew about three D printing of organs. Um, and there is one three D printed drug in the in the United States. It is already approved. Uh, has been approved for a couple of years now. Um, and the, the FDA actually had to come up with new rules um, about manufacturing drugs, three D printing them. Uh, so that's kind of the cutting edge and breaking for, for uh, anyone who's in the compounding field or wants to get the compounding field that's is, awesome. you know, go take some, go take some courses in 3d printing, go take some mm -hmm. courses in, in compounding. And then you've got yourself a, a whole, uh, you know, industry and passion that a lot of folks don't know about. Awesome. Um, and then you also mentioned conferences and I think, and I've talked a little bit this, you know, we have the videos from Stephanie, Erica, and Rachel, and yep. they all mentioned continuing education and going to conferences and a lot of events. And I think that's changing a little bit. I know we're not the only one to start, you know, for these types of events to start offering technician um, credits, but they were just like, just go to the conference. And even if they're not offering CEs, um, you know, try to get the, you can get some sort of paperwork that says that you attended and you took a CE level class. Absolutely. So you also agree with that. And, and it can just basically sounds like you're saying do whatever you can to get educated and find some documentation, even if it's not officially applicable to you. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I broke into the veterinary industry um, just by going to different conferences. Um, I, living in Colorado, Kentucky, you know, uh, Kentucky was working towards hemp legalization. Colorado was moving towards uh, marijuana legalization. Um, California had already passed it. Um, it, it was exciting because it's, it's breaking ground. Um, Minnesota, uh, their um, medical marijuana is dispensed by a pharmacist and pharmacy technician. Not a lot of people know that. They wanted people who were educated and um, professionals mm -hmm. and not just saying, I smoked one time. I think this is what happened. Um, so there's going to be a lot more of those, those opportunities that are out there is being able to say, um, well, I went to a conference um, and I learned about this. Well, usually conferences are, are giving information about what? Cutting edge information. Um, so I would highly, highly suggest that, you know, that'd be probably the first thing I tell people is go to a conference. Uh, there, there is great opportunities. Um, I did that for, like I said, the, the veterinary field, but I also did it uh, for 3D printing. I, I learned about the uh, back, uh, background aspect of, of 3D printing, um, extrusion, um, <laughs> and combining these, these medications and, and the, the filaments, how to make the filaments, what the filaments were, um, temperatures, um, what, what products work together, you know, did it have to have a filler? What was the filler? Uh, there's, there's a whole new side of pharmacy a lot of people don't know about, um, and it's not traditional. So you can't just go take a uh, pharmacy technician certification class or ACPE course that is out there. It's for 3D printing medication. They don't mm -hmm. exist. Um, and, you know, hopefully they will because folks like me and, and some of the other people who are um, on this conference, uh, they're on the cutting edge of, of this and they're willing to give their expertise and knowledge. Uh, I was that's say we why could, we could put together the course. That's well, that's why I was so excited when, when you brought this up. I, mm -hmm. I like hands down was like, Oh my God, this is going to be awesome. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're talking about people who are on the cutting edge who are going to be putting information out there. Um, but oftentimes it comes down to all of us kind of getting in one room and, and talking with one another. And we've seen that time and time again. Or yeah. people are like, I wish there was a certification course on this because no one knows about it. We can't find employees. Uh, and then we have to train them. Mm -hmm. well, heck, if you go to a conference uh, and, and take a class or even just sit in on a, on a conversation uh, from a professional who, who is in this industry, it's huge, absolutely huge. So yeah, being able to go to a conference um, is a great stepping stone. Okay, great. 
So one of the things I love talking to consultants about is, um, and of course you're not using your, your consulting hat for this presentation, but you see a lot of things and you're obviously very passionate and involved in this world. Have you got any great stories for us? Oh, God, I've seen it all. Although uh, the 3D printing was is is pretty awesome. I, I'm a total tech geek, so I love that stuff. Yeah, uh, no, it's it's been incredible um, working in the consulting industry for human and veterinary because I've, I've got to see it all. Uh, and it's also helped us develop products because we're trying to help fill gaps that didn't exist until, you know, the week before. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, it is exciting to see, I think, working with the different people in the different industries. Um, I know at one of the conferences that, that uh, you were involved with before, um, there was a gentleman that was there that um, was kind of heading the industry on, on marijuana testing. And it, we all knew it had to happen, but we didn't know anyone was doing it and how to do it. And uh, this gentleman was like, oh, yeah, like it's simple because he continuously was was going to these conferences and, and gaining this knowledge uh, and then became enthusiastic about it and then became the person. Um, but I think probably my favorite thing so far in working in this industry um, has been, is going to sound kind of crazy, but the animals. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have gathered that. Although I did, so I did have the thought of, uh, you know, Kentucky, that well-known state for whales. Yeah. Believe it or not, uh, the way that um, the veterinary field works is when an animal is transported from one state to another state or one state to or one country to another is they have to have a rest stop. And that means that medications in the veterinarian actually have to travel with with the animal. So um, like with horses, uh, there are people or their job is to help horses um, come out of anesthesia or come down. Uh, once they they have had anesthesia, uh, and, the, and these folks uh, we call them animal whispers. They they lay on the horses. They you know they they pet them. They hold them. You know, it is a crazy industry. I, I absolutely love it. Um, I am um, very fortunate. I've gotten to work in this industry. Um, I, I love getting to go and uh, see the animals. Um, some of my favorite is with the horses, um, yeah. but also. Every once in a while, the zoos, as they come, the, uh, an animal is being transported, um, the animal has to have a rest stop. So they'll take them to a compounding facility sometimes, or a veterinary facility that has compounding. That was the case in Kentucky. And uh, there was a giraffe, a baby giraffe. You want to talk about oh, the wow. <laughs> you, To be able to stand face to face, uh, we're talking less than you know three feet away from a baby giraffe is awesome. Oh, that does sound awesome. I want to be involved with animals. <laughs> Get off the computer and be with the animals. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, uh, great presentation. Really enjoyed it. I don't know if you want to give some parting thoughts or, you know, we can also save that. Yeah, just give us some parting thoughts. Or, you can just, or it can just be like, you know, I'll talk, yeah. we'll talk more on the 8th. I just want to say how extremely excited I am when this opportunity came up. Uh, to take so many industry experts who I believe are on the cutting edge. When, when I saw the list of names of, of presenters, um, I, I, I absolutely had to sign up. I had to join in. Um, and I continue to hope to, to work with these individuals. I've worked with so many of them. I know so many of them on a, on a personal level, um, just outstanding human beings and um, what they bring forward to the industry, the knowledge and wisdom that they're willing to, to share. They say, uh, to be able to mentor someone, and a lot of these people are mentors. Actually, I think every single one of them is a mentor, uh, is, is incredible. Um, and what you've brought together uh, has always been outstanding. Um, and like I said, the people who are involved, is, it's, it's great. It's absolutely great. Uh, it challenges every single one of us because we ourselves are learning um, from one another. Um, so I am thankfully uh humbly thankful that i've been able to be part of this um and that you've put this on and brought these individuals together um, it's, it's great well thank you that's very nice and i am always thrilled when people like you also uh come and, and join and help me out because it's it's always an exciting journey anyway yeah, I, I find that it's always cutting edge what you're doing is always cutting edge and, and that's what we need in this industry 
Yes, we're gonna we're gonna talk more and we're talking about the vet, but we're also gonna talk more now about 3D printing because I love that. So anyway, oh, yeah. we'll talk more on the eighth. Uh, that's when everybody can join us for the live discussion. So have a great day and thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, bye.